it's on this left side. We're going to be on the next two pages today. And then homework will be part of it, you guys finishing up what we just didn't finish for the, the problems here. So the triangle sum theorem, um, I know you guys already know the theorem because you all know um, what the measure of the angles of a triangle add up to. Um, can you guys tell me what are the measures of, a, of the angles of a triangle add up to be? Okay, 180 degrees. So what we're gonna do is uh, write that on the uh, on the top and then we're gonna prove this today. Um, this is the only proof we're doing today, but it's, it's a good proof to do. It's actually written uh, somewhere in the curriculum that you should see this proof. And then I've seen it, I've actually seen this proof on the SBAC test before. So I, anytime I do, I'm like, oh, okay, it's good that we actually go over it so you guys understand it. You're not expected to do, um, uh, do this proof on a test at all. It's just make sure you understand it as we go through it. Uh, yes, as you guys are typing, can you guys make sure it's on private chat? Um, so this is the sum of the angles of a triangle is equal to 180 degrees. So we use that along with another um, idea concept theorem today to just be its application based. So today is just finding those measures. So down below here, um, there's an area that says proof of triangle sum theorem. And we're gonna do this in a, a, a different type of way. Instead of a two column proof, we're gonna do a flow, flow proof. Um, so I wanted you guys to just see that this is a possibility for a way to do um, the proof process as well. So if I can have you guys draw a triangle for me and label the vertices of this triangle A, B, C, and also to name the angles um, inside numbered angles as well. So angle one, angle two, and angle three. And the first step we're gonna do, just gonna draw bubbles around the steps instead of um, having us do a two column proof. Yeah, someone needs uh, the top really quickly, so I'll, I'll move it back down. The top says the sum of the angles of a triangle um, are equal to, or is equal to 180 degrees. Okay, now down below, you have triangle ABC. We're gonna say draw line L parallel to AC, segment AC through B. Okay, there was a question on your test that said um, draw an auxiliary line. And then I think I got one or two kids who asked that question. Um, but in parentheses, the hint was that it just meant draw an extension of a line. So you guys see a picture of a triangle, but you don't see this one line that we need in order to flush out the proof. Um, so what we do is we add like, it's almost like an imaginary line. Think of the auxiliary line as an imaginary line. So in a different color, I'm just gonna draw this imaginary line through B. And that line is gonna allow me to form two angles that I need for this proof, uh, angle four and angle five. Those are outside of the, the triangles. So you have four, two and five there. Okay, and I'll switch back and just draw a bubble around this. This is the first step that I did. I drew that extra line. Okay, after that, um, it says draw line L parallel to AC. So now you know that this line is parallel to this line. Okay, based off of what you guys just learned, if those two lines are parallel, what sets of angles are congruent to each other? What sets of angles are equal to each other in measure? There's two sets, okay? So Peter said measure of angle five and three. So let's say measure of angle five is equal to measure of angle three. Um, someone else, Christian said measure of angle one is equal to measure of angle four. Those are both true, right? So we know after we drew that line that since that line is parallel, we know that these are equal to each other, so good. And then um, from there, uh, what types of angles are those angles or why? What would your justification be for that? Okay, good. So below that, let's just jot AIA below those two statements. To the right of that, I'm also gonna make a statement that if I was looking at a two column proof, this next statement could easily have gone before these uh, two statements that I just made. So they're uh, concurrent statements that we can make. Um, but if you look at four, two and five, what do four, two, and five have to add up to be? 
what's the measure of four plus the measure of two plus the measure of five have to add up to be? So I'm gonna write that out. Measure of four plus measure of angle two plus measure of angle five, good. You guys are writing, it must be equal to 180 degrees. So let's go ahead and circle that. Again, it's written concurrently or on the same level as the other ones, because that easily could have gone um, uh, on this uh, before in a two column proof before I stated that, that the uh, sets of angles are, are equal to each other. So that is by um, definition of a straight angle. So a straight angle is an angle that adds up to 180 degrees. Again, I just need you guys to follow along. You don't have to remember that. Um, I just wanted to make sure you, it makes sense to you guys as we're working it through. Okay, so next thing, remember all of this is proving the triangle sum theorem, which is that the angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So my last step is taking all of these uh, steps here above and putting it together. Okay, so if I know that five is equal to three, one's equal to four, do I now know that the measure of angle one plus measure of angle two plus measure of angle three is equal to 180 degrees? And what did I do to get that? Okay, so quite a few of you guys wrote yes, because you know five is equal to three. You can plug three into five. If you know one is equal to four, you can plug one into four. So very good substitution property. And we get that the measures of the angles of a triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. Okay, I'll leave it there for a few seconds. We're gonna move on to the next page. And again, the theorems, you guys don't have to remember the theorems by name. Um, you just have to be able to apply it. And what I mean by that is if you see a triangle, you have two angles missing, you should be able to find the third angle by subtracting the sum of the other two angles from 180 degrees. Okay, so at the top of the next page, I'm going to define two things for you guys before I come up with the exterior angle theorem. Um, so this is, can I have you guys draw a, um, maybe not so big triangle, but a triangle on the at the top of your page. Okay, and then I'm going to define an exterior air angle of a triangle. Okay, so if I were to take um, this line and extend it further, then I form an angle that is on the outside. Outside, another word for outside is exterior. So this angle right here is called the exterior angle. It's on the outside. Okay, and it's formally, it's formed by one side of a triangle. And the extension of an adjacent side. Okay, so physically speaking, you guys have, uh, it's formed by one side of a triangle and the extension of a side that's adjacent. So this side is the adjacent and we extended it beyond there. And the angle that we're referring to is that angle. Okay, the next definition is remote interior angles of a triangle. What does the word remote mean? Like when you guys go camping in a remote area or you go off grid and you go to a remote area, what does that mean? Okay, the word remote, some people said alone, quiet, secluded, good, uh, deserted. Um, so when I'm describing remote interior, first interior means it's on the inside. So we're now speaking of possibly these three angles. Okay, if this angle is the exterior angle, then the two angle, angle furthest away um, is this angle here and this angle right here. Okay, so that's the, the two angles that's furthest away from that angle, that exterior angle right there. Okay, so we would call these um, your two remote interior angles. So remote interior angles. Okay, and then so in the definition section, we'll say it's the interior angles inside triangle and not adjacent means not next to. If it's not next to, it's remote. Remote means far away. 
So adjacent, not adjacent to exterior angle. So I think the reference point is the exterior angle. The remote part is it's furthest away from the exterior angle. Okay, so we needed the definition of those two um, to define the exterior angle theorem. Okay, and then I'll show you guys just um, uh, conceptually wise why this is true. Okay, so we're gonna define um, the theorem to say that the measure of the exterior angle is equal to the sum of the two remote interior. Okay, and then someone in the last class asked, why is that true? So I will show you guys with um, an example. Uh, so we're gonna do not do the first two because I think those are easy. Some of these I'm just saving for your homework problems. So number seven, if you guys look at number seven, you see that this, this angle here is formed by one side and the extension of another side. So how would you guys classify, not classify, but how would you guys describe that angle 3x minus 22? Uh, in terms of the uh, the definition that you see above there in the box, what is 3x minus 22? Is it the interior angle? Is it, what is that? Exterior angle. Okay, so good. It's exterior angle. And uh, I'm going to do the work over on the left-hand side so that I save the room on the right because I'm going to add something to that side. 3x minus 22 is equal to uh, according to the theorem, the exterior angle is equal to the sum of the two remote interior angles. So x plus e. Okay, so if I subtract x, I get uh, 2x. And then if I add 22, I get, so add 22 on both sides, just trying to get a, a solve for this equation. So I get 102 divided by 2. X therefore is 51. So this is an application of the exterior angle theorem. You're just expected to be able to understand what it's saying and to apply it. Okay, so no proofs with it. Um, for eight, so someone at this point said, oh, how do you know that that's true? So I'm gonna show you guys how you know. Okay, so let's say you didn't know the exterior angle theorem and I asked you to solve for X and Y. Okay, so um, you guys, how would you, can you solve for X without knowing any of this information over here? Can you solve for x? Yes. OK, what's the process of solving for x? You add the other two angles and then subtract that uh, value from 180. OK, perfect. So if you added the other two angles, um, if you added the other two angles, you would get 104 degrees, right? And then if you subtract that from 180, you guys would get x is 76. Now I want you guys to pay attention to y. Okay, what type of angle is Y as it pertains to 65 and 39? It's on the outside of that triangle, right? Go ahead, were you gonna say something? Supplementary angle. Okay, so yeah, it's if you were to try to find X um, and it's and you didn't know the remote exterior or if you didn't know the exterior angle theorem, then 76 and, um, and Y are what we call a linear pair. So they must be supplementary to each other. So therefore, um, solving it uh, that way, you get that it's equal to 104, that y is equal to 104, because 104 plus 76 is 180. Now look at 104 here and 104 here. The, if we describe y as the exterior angle, it also happens to be the sum of the two remote interior angles. And so that way, um, we knowing the theorem, allows us to, if we weren't asked to solve for X, allow us to skip having to find X to then find angle Y. Um, so then now that you guys know 104, you can take 104, add it to 21 and get 125. And then that's gonna allow us to solve on the smaller triangle, Z is 55. Okay, so as our last um, theorem for today, again, an application one, not a uh, one that you guys have to uh, do any proofs on. Uh, this one, after I, I describe it, you, you guys will be like, well, duh, that looks true um, without really having to uh, state it. Okay, so third angle theorem. Okay, so this is gonna say, if you know two angles of one triangle, are congruent 
to two angles of another triangle. Uh, then the third pair of angles are congruent. Okay, so um, visually, what does that mean? So let's say you guys were to draw two triangles that uh, go ahead and draw it so that they look um, congruent to each other. Okay, and let's say you were told that the top angles of both triangles are 20 degrees. And then that the um, bottom left of the first one is 60. And the bottom uh, right of the other one is also 60. So according to this theorem, as long as you guys have two pairs of angles of, a of, of two sets of triangles are congruent to each other, then you would know this is called the third angle theorem. You would then be able to conclude that uh, this angle must be congruent to this angle. And that seems uh, pretty obvious, right? If I were to uh, be asked to find the measures of those angles for each one of those, I'd sum up what I have, subtract it from 180, and they're both equal to 80 degrees. Um, so 80 degrees, and then subtract that from 180. And we know that the pink angle is therefore 100 degrees. Since they have the same measure, they must be congruent to each other. So again, just be able to apply it. If you saw two triangles and two pairs of angles, are already congruent, you know the third pair is, has to be congruent. Um, so yeah, anytime you guys have trouble with printing a packet, um, just jot down whatever notes you guys can with us. And then for the homework assignment, you can do the problems on a separate sheet of paper. That's OK, too. Um, so as the last problem, uh, I wanted to do one that was a little bit more difficult. So number two on the right hand side, this question here. Um, what do you guys know about, and let me just kind of leave that on, on there so if some people are still copying. If you know that these angles are congruent, uh, what do you guys know about these two lines? Okay, that they must be parallel. And Andrew, it's fine to switch off your camera if it's lagging. Okay, uh, converse of CA, excellent. Converse of CA, you know those lines must be parallel. Okay, so that, I mean, that one probably wasn't necessary for us to have to find, um, but it's just interesting to note because it's going to come back into play for us in triangles as well. Um, so you know that uh, this angle here on the X is what they want me to, I shouldn't draw a right angle because it makes it look like it's a right angle, but they want me to find this angle right here, X. Okay, so I noticed that X, it happens to be on the outside of um, the triangle, and on the inside you have 41 and 38 are your remote interior angles. So the, with the least amount of work, all I have to do is if I recognize that the exterior angles on the outside of those two remote interior angles on the inside of the triangle, then I can sum them up and uh, add them together and then they should be equal to that exterior angle. So when I do that, I get that X must be equal to 80 degrees. So anyone have any questions on that? Again, that was using exterior angle theorem. Um, 